Bows. 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 Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, you know, my dad. Well, go on. <clears throat> but let me tell y'all don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms, including our new platform is Patreon. That's where you're going to see our full length interviews after a while. We're not going to start, we're not going to put them on YouTube anymore. But for a small membership fee, you can see all of our full length interview, even before time. On Patreon. Man, y'all hear she say it even before time on Patreon. It's almost like a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Check it, man. Hey, man, we got a guy here today, y'all. He really don't need no introduction. This guy right here, man, man, it go all the way back for me, man. Mr. Ice Cream Man and all them other hits, man. There's a lot of hooks this guy right here done been on, man, and created a wave, man, of no-limit soldiers in the building, man, but really a beast by the pound of mm -hmm. original, man. Check it, man. Absolutely. Moby Dick is in the building. What's going on? What's happening, brother? It's a blessing to be here. You heard me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just love it. You heard me? Man, so, man, you know, um, man, like I said, KL, man, that's my guy, man. He been rocking with me, man, and, and he put me on, you know, uh, he put me on early in the game in this show. He came by here. Shout out to Corey Clout, who brought that's him through. Dude. Corey brought him through. We just had started this thing, man. We we And, and it was a blessing, man. And, and now look what it's done. Look what's done happen, man. You know, I'm waiting on my, my either Beats by the Pound chain or No yeah. Limit chain. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I made that introduction between him and Corey Claycorn. That's, 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 that's him, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, uh, so you and Corey, how did you link with Corey? Well, man, shout out to my frat brother, uh, Ike Mo, Ike Williams, man. He's a... Um, He's a basketball phenom, man. He used to play for uh, the University of New Mexico. Okay. And by way of, uh, of the fraternity, the bros. Hey. Fly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shout yeah. out to the bros, root to the bros. Well, we had a project. What's the name of the fraternity? Omega Psi Phi Fraternity okay. Incorporated. Incorporated. The only. One and only. But me and him, <laughs> we were working on a project back in 2021, 2000. My bad. 2001. Mm -hmm. 2002. And uh, we had a project that we had in East Dallas called uh, Texas Best Kept Secret. You know what I'm saying? Sh TBKS for short. And while we were working on that project, you know, we were going all over Dallas from East Dallas to Oak Cliff to Pleasant Grove to, you know what I'm saying? All over Dallas, man. And, um, and we were finding talent and we put it all on this one project. And Corey had his own label. I forgot the name of the label he had back in the day. Out there in Oak Cliff, he had some artists. One I can remember is uh, Sir Charles. He was on that project. We put him on that project. And Corey was, was always a boss from day one, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, he, he's been, he's been what you call the white chocolate, you know, from day one. And uh, when we met, it was just instantaneous vibe and connection and Eventually, I, I, I introduced him in KLC when KL got introduced to the project as well. So that's how that happened. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. so how I like to do it here, because I like to get to know you as a person and not you as the artist or the entertainer mm -hmm. and so forth. But growing up in New Orleans, what part of New Orleans were you raised in or born I, in? I actually was raised in a town that's due west, 80 okay. miles due west of New Orleans called Morgan City, Louisiana. I've heard that before. Yeah, it's and actually uh, on the outskirts of that, a uh, 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 incorporated section called Syracuseville. Never heard that one yeah. before. <laughs> but it's right there. You know, it's Morgan City. We use the the, uh, the zip code and also the post office. Okay. So that's where I was raised at. You know. So what, I'm what was it like being raised there compared to when people talk about New Orleans and the things that go on in New Orleans? Was your city any different? A major difference, you know, because it's more industrial. Okay. You know, we're connected to the uh, shrimp and petroleum industry, mm. seafood and petroleum. Like a lot of your big companies like um, um, Halliburton is connect. It's located there, you know what I'm saying? Those who push uh, the petroleum products and drill offshore. Mm -hmm. So, matter of fact, I used to work in that industry myself, you know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, that's it, it was pretty industrious, but at the same time, 
it has its struggles. It had, you know, everybody got their thugs, you know, they got their, you know, their, their knuckleheads, their hardheads. So, you know, and a lot of the people from our area, you know, when they're getting in the street life, they wind up going to the prisons like Angola. Right. We, we populate those prisons, you know what I'm saying? That's nothing to glorify, but we're in there, you know what I'm saying? So you talk about knuckleheads. Were you a knucklehead as a kid growing up? No, actually, I was a good kid. Really? But I made some bad choices as <laughs> I got older trying to, you know, you know, test the streets. I, I've been in them streets. I've been in the prison system as well. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I was raised by some good people. So mom and saying? dad in the household? Oh, absolutely. Both parents. That's good. Married? Yeah, married, yeah. Till, awesome. Till, till my dad passed in 2009. Wow. That's a blessing. Cause Absolutely. Looking back now, you see how many people didn't have that. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's surreal. Yeah, That's it's, real. It's real, man. So I was blessed to raise with both parents and, you know. Uh, but did you value that as a child? Because, you know, most kids don't value it. Oh, man, I still value it. But as a no. child? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely as a child. Because our neighborhood was built on those. Mm -hmm. uh, most everybody in our neighborhood and really in our city, you know, we, most of us had both our parents, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I wasn't raised with my, with a grandmother, but, you know what I'm saying? But I was raised with my parents and mm -hmm. uncles and, you know, families, everything now and now. Right. Mm -hmm. So you had siblings as well? Absolutely. So I was raised with my baby sister. Baby, so you're the oldest? Well, by way of my mother, but my dad had kids before he before. married my mother. Okay. So I have an older brother that I knew. I have an older, where well, he's deceased. He passed away. Oh, uh, rest in, Yeah, passed away. Uh, rest in peace, Stanley mm -hmm. T. Joe. That's my big brother. You know, and that's the only big brother I knew and um, that I had. And I have a big, an uh, older sister. Her name is Yvette. She's out mm -hmm. there, you know, in Georgia right now. So shout that's out awesome. to Yvette. Yeah, so. so when did you start loving music? How old were you? Ah, uh, um, uh, I think. And I was, why? I think it was in the embryo. I was an embryo. <laughs> so your mama used to play because you know how they say that they said um, when you are pregnant with a child, and you just play music, whatever music, they're gonna come out and loving that. Absolutely. So, so that's where you think that happened. I think that happened. Then it's also in the bloodline. You know what I'm saying? I come from a, a you know, a lineage of musicians. Tell me some yeah. of them. My grandfather for uh for starts, Emil Washington was my mom's okay. dad. And he was uh his family's well really the church's um minister of music. Okay. And ultimately I became a minister of music in the church later okay. on. Okay. So you were raised in the church as well? Absolutely, yeah. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So um where did you get the name Moby Dick? Cause that's the part that I'm like, okay, where did that come from, and how yeah. old were you when you came up with that, and why? Well, I was, see, I went through several names when I was choosing my path mm -hmm. in the music industry. So, like, I was, you know, went from musician to to beat maker to beat to producer. Always had because you were singing in the church first, right? Yeah, I was singing there in the first, okay. first, you know, what I'm saying in the church choir. Ever since I was like a youth, mm -hmm. but uh, that name, you know, uh, I'm going to have to because I got this one out. Oh, okay. You can find that out in here. Oh, hey. oh you gonna leave me? So it tells it all in the book. Oh, I got everything in there. Because you know, when people Moby think about Dick Moby Dick, you think about the the kid's story, the whale, right? Yeah, I mean, but see, it's spelled different. A lot of people spell my name with the Y. Mm. But I separated is, and you'll find out in that book called the Moby Dickopedia. Dickopedia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's one I'm gonna have to uh, send on the scam, send people on the scavenger hunt for. That's dope. Mm -hmm. I love the pictures but in it, there. I could say this much: it's not what you think. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not what you think. But you hit you hit a good point on on the Moby the, the whale. Mm -hmm. I've been compared to the whale. right. Cause that's the first thing I think about when I think about that name growing mm -hmm. up. You know what I mean? Well, I would say that it does have some connotations of that mm -hmm. because uh, you know it, it's it's a um, a lot of people wrote, read that book in um, in elementary or college. Exactly. But you know, but eventually the whale gets harpooned and dies. So that's not the <laughs> that's part. Not of the part. <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. But you know, being that he was a, a beast in that water, right? And I was raised around nothing but water, mm -hmm. you know, like three bodies of water, bayou, river, lake. Yeah, mm -hmm. right there. So you, it's like 
Where I'm from is like a big island. Matter of fact, they used to call it Tiger Island. Oh, okay. Right. Mm-hmm. But coming up in the church and you were singing, and, you know, you said you loved music from, you know, the embryo, but when did you decide what genre of music and how you're going to take those steps to go into that? Because you were singing in the in the church, so you could have mm-hmm. branched off into gospel, R&B. You could have done so many different things. Great question. Great question. And I've never been asked, before, asked that before. Great journalist. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, but, this is how we win yeah, over here, Moby. Moby, we ready. Absolutely. I can promise you. Absolutely. This is going to be the best interview ever. That, that, what, what, what did DOC say? This was a good one. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, you from here, too. Shout yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, shout, shout out to DOC, DOC man. Yeah. We love that guy, man. Mm-hmm. Let's get to it. So this is what happened. Um, I've been a musician all my life. Right. You know, I got accolades from uh, high school, junior high, and stuff like that in the band. Mm-hmm. Went all the way from fifth grade to college. Actually, I marched at Southern University. What instrument did you play in the band? I played several. Okay. A whole, but at Southern University, I played the mellophone. Okay. Mm-hmm. But um, jazz has always been my love and R&B, especially the, the 70s and the, the 80s. I think that's the best stretch of... Uh, like, how can you come from New Orleans and not love jazz? I love jazz. I don't think you anybody in New Orleans you don't know, love jazz. Well, we we're re- we're really, we started pop culture. A lot of people don't know. You know, if, if you do your history, you know, pop culture comes from jazz. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So without jazz, it wouldn't be no mm-hmm. nothing. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. So, but, but anyway, uh, my love is actually that. But uh, hip hop was very popular. You know what I'm saying? When I, when I came, you know, my college days and stuff like that. And for a while, I didn't you know have a real good appreciation of it, and to really tell like the gangster rap came out. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I I could identify what N.W.A. was talking about, what Schoolie D was talking about. You know what I'm saying? And what was Ice the first T. song you heard that made you relate? Uh, I, actually, "Hard Times" by Run D M C. Hey. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? War going on across, across the, the sea. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they're, they're, but they're coming for me. <laughs> and something. That don't win in. Street, I mean. shows, street soldiers <laughs> killing the, the enemy or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Whatever happened to unity, it's like that. And that's the and way. that's it. the way it is. And hard the, uh, times had the same yeah, cadence. Yep, yeah, yeah, hard times. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, I would say the message also. You know what I'm saying? That was uh, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. Mm-hmm. And, the, you know, I related to those. Those are things I really related to. But then when things that were going on in my neck of the woods, I would say N.W.A., I would, you know, that uh, dope man, uh, that stuff right there. Because during that time, that was what going on everywhere. Right. I thought it was just in my area. But then when they said that, I'm like, okay, that's it's happening not everywhere. just. Mm-hmm. Here, that's in California too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I identify with that. And uh, Schoolie D, um, what's that one he did? Um, I can't think of it right now. Uh, PSK 13, mm-hmm. that one right there, you know. So, so that made yeah. you branch off into the rap? Yeah, because I was, I was a youth and I, mm-hmm. you know, I wanted to be hip. And I had something. And you to wanted say the girls? Me. Yeah, <laughs> like that never was a yeah. problem. Never was a problem. I had them, and you know. Oh, okay. I had, you know, I had I my got share. You. You I got you. I got you. So, but what steps did you take to to get to where you are today? Like first, step, because there's a lot of young people who are watching, who have been trying to get into this music industry for years, and can't get a break. So, what did you do, and how long did it take you? The R word, research. Mm. Back in the day, we didn't have. <laughs> Uh, the internet. Internet, exactly. We had libraries. Uh-huh. So you could find whatever you wanted in the library, whether it be copyrights, you know, connected to the uh, Library of Congress. You know, uh, I went and got this book by Kashif. Yeah. Which you better know about the music industry, mm-hmm. you know. So I was going, you know, wherever I was, wherever I was living, whether it be New Orleans, Morgan City, you know, I would go to the library and research. Mm-hmm. Was, craft. was this after you got older because you said earlier that you had bumped your head a little bit and ended up doing some time mm-hmm. like how old was you when you did your time 
I would say and I wouldn't do. And I ain't gonna say I did a whole like years. I did a couple of months. Like okay, I passed cool. Prison. Okay, so it didn't take me long to say this ain't the place. This ain't the place. <laughs> hey, uh, there it so is. Once, once, once the judge gave me the grace, well, I would say God used the judge to say, hey, get him up out of here. You know what I'm saying? God bless me in many ways, so I didn't have to do a whole bunch of time, but Good. just enough for me to say, you know what? Nah, this ain't the route. And how old were you? I was about. I would say about. 27. Okay. Oh, so you were older. Yeah, 27. No, I would say no. I, yeah, about 27, 26, something like mm-hmm. that. You know, because at that time, you know, um, when a lot of stuff was happening economically to where, you know, they put a chokehold, you know, on us. Mm-hmm. And it was a, and it, be, it created what you call a filtration system into what they call the prison industrial complex. I don't know if y'all are familiar with that yeah, term. Yeah, we, we actually was researching prisons last night. Well, yeah. I was telling about how many prisons was in, in Texas, Texas and versus everywhere else. Texas yeah. got the most prisons. Texas has everybody. 94 prisons compared to, um, and I compared it to so California. California. The reason being because California is a big state compared, to, you know, just like Texas is. Mm-hmm. California only had 34 compared to us having 94. <laughs> That's crazy. And well, well, like, Texas is the second biggest state you know, what's well, the biggest state in the continental United States? That's but, crazy, yeah. though. Yes, you know we what have I'm the we have the most prisons anywhere. Well, I'm just gonna say this much: the narrative that's going on right now in hip hop is another filtration system to that industry. Mm-hmm. Prison is an industry. Yes. It's a big business. It's a, it's a big business. Business. And I was telling her, like, if you even go out there and you got a wall in there, so a beehive, and you stir it up, then you can get them, get them going. See, mm-hmm. and and here you have to stir it up to make sure that you keep those prisons, uh, uh, you know, at a place to where they can keep it at max capacity. Yeah, the doors Absolutely. are revolving. So you have to Absolutely. stir it up. Absolutely. That means stirring up the uh, the legal the, the legal system. Absolutely. That, that means going out and, and, and figuring some things out to make it to where we can keep these facilities full. Well, you know, it's who funds the government. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? See, a lot of people say we get think that we get money Taxpayers. from the government, but you mm-hmm. got billionaires out here. You got people, how do they become billionaires? Mm-hmm. By, you know, insourcing and outsourcing. And that means cheap labor, mm-hmm. free labor. Free wow. labor. You, 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 when, you, when, I, when I look over there at you and I think about all the stuff, Mr. Ice Cream Man, I keep saying that song because that was mm-hmm. one of my favorites during that time. Mm-hmm. How did that even come about? You know, I want to jump right into that song. Like, Mr. Ice, how did you come up with it? How did y'all come up with that? Just explain to me how that uh, whole process went. Shout out to Cuz, man, P. You know, P, you know, they, he had this vision. He was a visionary. Okay. You know? And P had this concept of the ice cream man. You know, a lot of people want to say that, you know, where there was an actual beef between him and the loonies about who was the real ice cream man and so on and so forth. I didn't know nothing about that prior to, but at the studio session, shout out to K. Lou, was at K. Lou's studio session, and he caught the vibe. I, you know, it's like the vibe was infectious. He had the concept. And, you know, when he was doing his thing, you know, I just was, you know, as I heard the beat, matter of fact, me and K. Lou, you know, we collabed on that beat. You know, I played some keys on that as well. So after I finished laying my keyboard part on there, uh, I went to singing. And Carl say, go, go drop that. And that was it. You know what I'm saying? That's. It's been going ever since, you know. Man, that's that's one thing about it, man. P man, he had to be he had to be a special kind of leader to even, you know, um have an ear for that type of sound or to go with what he felt like was his because he had to go with his gut. When you're young, you gotta go with what you feel. You gotta go with what you think is gonna be the right way, you know. Um just the fact of all of those different songs, it, it makes you somewhat of a, like I told you on the phone, like the, uh, Nate, I compare you to Nate Dog when it come down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, people say yeah that. because of the way that you, you know, the way that you hooking them, you know, the, the hooks, man, the way that you was doing your thing, man, you, you can't deny that, that that talent is there. And yeah. and it's not a talent that everybody possess. I'll just say it like that. So you blessed I, to be able to do that. God is great, man. I'm just expressing myself the way I knew how. You know what I'm saying? And filling those voids that I figured that, you know, I was in the, on the vibe, you know, just had a vibe, catching a vibe. 
And when that vibe, the vibe was felt, you know, Cubs would say, "Yo, lay that Cubs." They used to call me that a lot, Cubs, because me and him yeah, were cousins. Y'all are cousins. Mm-hmm. So how are y'all cousins? Through the mom, dad, or what? Paternal side. Okay. Paternal okay. Side. Okay. Like his his uh, dad's dad and my dad. They're brothers. Okay. We're close kin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're close kin. Yeah, and, and, and so when you think about just uh, you guys uh, early on, we're going to go back to the early stages when you went to, you end up going to L.A. Uh, or Richmond. Richmond, absolutely. Um, when you ended up going to Richmond. Um, no, keep going. I'm listening. <laughs> I just want to know how you end up up there. I know how Kale, when he first went, it was him, Servon, and uh, Mia X, right? Well, the full story is in that book. Oh, I, really? I give, yeah, I got it's called a movie. Mm-hmm. For you know, I would say partial story because it's not a, a that book. Moby Dickopedia is, is in the encyclopedic format. Oh, okay, you had to go so, research. So, so the encyclopedia, if you know the site, the format of encyclopedia is summarized stories. It's not like the full blown out story. Yeah. So I got summarized mm-hmm. stories in mm-hmm. there, but that story, you know, happened here. Mm. Dallas? Dallas? Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's hard. Dallas. That's hard. Because, you here tonight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. God don't make no mistakes. <laughs> I don't make I no mistakes. Either. So you know, it happened. You know, um, me and my frat brothers, we were road tripping from Kansas, mm-hmm. and um, two of my frat brothers were, you know, security there. Got in there and uh, got in there for free. Ran ran across my cousin. You know, inadvertently didn't know that he was doing a um, promotional tour. Mm-hmm. And he spotted me actually, and then you know we, we made that reunion type of thing, connection, exchange numbers. Two weeks later, I was in, you know. Oh, that's Richmond. awesome! Yeah, that's how that happened. Wow. <clears throat> you want it? But at, at that time, you weren't making. Were you doing beats at that time? Oh yeah. Okay. I, I had see. I had previously before that, I had my own record label. Oh. I was partnering with with my cousin Mary Young. Okay. And, uh, you know, we had already did music, you know what I'm saying? And at that time, I was actually a church organist in Wichita, Kansas. So I always did music. It's what I do. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, it's in the blood. Yes, yeah, what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but I'm um, Was okay. he doing music before you was rapping? You was doing the, the beats and the. Oh, sound? yeah. So that was first. I had drum machine in the church before Kanye. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's hard. Absolutely. That's hard, man. Yeah, yeah I got witnesses for it. <laughs> <laughs> so when did y'all create Medicine Men? That was after the departure. When we departed, um, we departed No Limit. Okay. You know, what made y'all leave? Well, <laughs> <laughs> but you know but what? It was but a disagreement. I was about it, to it, say. It a disagreement. You keep saying it's in here, but you said it's a summary. So give me everything else. That's not in the summary. That's in here. That's there not in there. Yeah, we well, gotta get him in here. Huh? It, it was. It was. It was a disagreement. Mm-hmm. I would say. Thing, I was just gonna say this here. Things were happening prior to, and it just came to a head. You know, things you have strife and all that within any family. Cause like I'm saying, P is my family. I love them to this day. You see what I'm saying? But you have internal strife that was going on. Things that weren't being. Um, communicated properly that part because that's and, what causes and, any disagreement yeah. and there was a riff in the communication mm-hmm. and you know he that, at that time he was off doing his basketball thing mm-hmm. you know I'm saying and you know he you know he's he's a man of many hats and he does you know he like to he was fulfilling his dream because he's also mm-hmm. a basketball player too. right I remember and he got two sons as beast right now mm-hmm. out there. but you know he was just doing him right and the line of communication got messed up and we things weren't you know we didn't weren't able to work it out right and we had a a, a hardcore disagreement and that was a wrap mm. so medicine men because when i look it up i see medicine men in per, in parentheses but then i see beats by the pound so is it the same mine is carlos okay because i know when i counted how many people they say that was a part of beats by the pound it was like seven people but then when i asked him he said no i thought it was like four or five people it was four or five see the dj daryl's right i saw the that Kays, they were like honorary we, oh, okay you know, they did you know we can okay. actually say pmc was honorary 
Mm. Stop playing. Don't one. do that on my show. That's stop. Time. Once you do that right there, the whole, this whole show he yeah. him will stop. That's my dude. My Let me tell you something about Pimp C, man. From a kid, ever since I'm older than him, from the tell me something good mm -hmm. when it first jumped off, uh, I've been rocking with this guy. So, yeah. um, yeah, that right there stops the whole show every time. When KL <laughs> came, when uh, he's a Leo, Bobo, uh, Mr. Lee, whoever. Mm -hmm. We got to talk about that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Because, dude, man. listen, man, how, this? I already did the background check on you, man, when players from the South stack G's. Mm -hmm. Listen, hey, that hard, that's, that song right there, that's one of the hardest songs. Man, I told Silk, didn't I? I told Silk, I say, arguably, you had one of the better verses on that song for me. Yeah, people were sleeping on Silk. You heard it just a lot of people tough. said that he now a lot of people say he can't rap because he rap off beat because he rap off but beat. I'm telling you on that song and I played it on you seen how when I interviewed him, listen that of course I'm gonna go with 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 Pimp C far as because it was just something about his swag but lyrically being a younger dude Silk was giving him hell back then and Silk was beat see you got to look at Silk in this way see it's what you appreciate what your taste is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can look at a painting, like Picasso. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or people who do abstract, abstract art. I was just thinking about that. They can just put a little splash, and wo and some people are going to see something from that. Yeah. That's how Silk was with his with his um, his wordplay mm -hmm. and, and the way his flow was. He, he just wanted to be different. That, that was him. Mm -hmm. You know, Silk is actually an intelligent guy. You know what I'm saying? All three of the Miller brothers are very mm -hmm. intelligent. I'm saying that's my blood, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, uh, yeah. And the, see, I'm gonna tell you what, I had some of them better sessions with Silk, you know, from, you know, uh, if it ain't, you know, if, if I don't got her, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That, that right there, you know, that was very fun and very interesting to see him do what he do, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I had to stop an interview one time, it was in Atlanta, somebody was trying to uh, go off on my cuz, you know what I'm saying, and say some, Negative things about him, I stopped the whole interview. I said, man, look, you ain't about to talk to my cousin, about my cousin. Mm -hmm. I'm his cousin, mm -hmm. so you're not about to talk about him in front of my face. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But Silk was dope. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I really appreciated Silk. Man, I think, I, like I said, I'm. that's why I went and interviewed him, because I mm -hmm. like him. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I thought, you know, he, he was a younger dude during that time. And so to me, with him being a younger guy, the, the next generation always carried a vision for me. Mm -hmm. you, you know, when you look at history and the way things unfold. So I already know, and something he said in that interview, he said if if Drake would have been uh, right, rhyming some of the things he said, they'd have looked at it as the ones who don't like him would look at him as great mm -hmm. because it's just the way people are. And I agree with him on that. You know what I mean? Because you got to, you pretty much, you, you, you have to sell what you what you what you giving out? You have to convince. It's your the way you bring it, and I think, like I say, for that time, his confidence level, even the Hot Boys movie, when you look at his acting and all mm -hmm. that, how proud of you was it when you when you uh, when you seen the Hot Boys movie and all that stuff happening? Some of the uh, cast, uh, our has Hot Boys yeah. movie. Yes. You know what? When that came out, I never saw it. Really? I never saw it. We were working. We <laughs> about a pound. We didn't stop. That's I all. noticed so that because when I looked it up, y'all did so many um, like 30. records. No, I saw something like between 30 album 95 and 99, y'all had over 30, 30 million records. No, nah, it was my soul. So, so, yeah, so yeah, it was, it, and it was accumulating that, you know, right. And now we're in the digital world, so you know. Yeah. Yeah, we were working, we never stopped. It was like a five years, like, like oh man, it was a blur. Mm -hmm. we never stop you know what I'm saying we were the engine to that tank mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying in order for any vehicle to move properly you got to have the engine and it has to be fine tuned it's got to be have proper maintenance and all that type of stuff so we were that engine you know what I'm saying but do you realize how much y'all affected other rappers um, because just like in anything that you do in nature if any career, if you push hard and you're pushing like the way how y'all are doing, all you do is make other people push just as hard. If y'all didn't do what y'all were doing, they wouldn't be pushing as hard. Well, I'm a, I got to give credit where credit is due. It was P that, you know, he was a driving force. 
like he never stopped. He hardly ever sleep. So he, it was like we went from we were working on several projects at one time. Like he said earlier, the revolving doors of artists mm -hmm. from the mystical, from the sea murder, from the fiends, the Mia X, Cain and Abel's, Mac. He just didn't stop. So with a plethora of talent like that, and we we had a uh, we had due dates that were posted on the wall. And we had to meet those due dates. Where did he get that drive from? You're his cousin. You knew him, you know, since he was little, right? Mm-hmm. Where did he get that drive from? Well, he come from the Calio Projects. Right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm going to use the, uh, I think it's Still Pulse made the song called Sense of Purpose. I think it was Still, still mm -hmm. Pulse. Maybe Third World, but I think it's Still Pulse. But uh, they had a song called Sense of Purpose. He had a sense of purpose. He didn't want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying to go back to that. I don't want to subject my children to that. Right. So he had a doubt his drive, you know what I'm saying? And he, you know, he had whatever agreement he had with priority. He wanted to supersede that because I think they doubted him. Mm -hmm. But then by the, you know, when he got us, when he had first meeting KL or whatever, I think he had met KL before he had ran into me out here. Mm -hmm. And KL was, you know, still DJing. But, you know, me and KL wound up in in um, California, and we heard the other guys' beats and stuff like Craig B and Odell. Carlos was already doing business with him. When he figured he had that sound, he had something that could support, you know, his identity. So, because what he was before us, he was doing a lot of Bay Area stuff for you. You know, you can go back to his earlier albums, and it didn't do it quite like have the, the quite the same effect mm -hmm. as to when we came to the table. Right. So that that really changed the game right there. In the Beast by the Pound group, who would you say, because when you have a group, everybody has their specific um, talent mm -hmm. that they offer to the group. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say your talent was, or what was it specifically that you did for the group to enhance the group? I was multidimensional. Okay, not only did I do beats, I sang, songwriter, you know, mm -hmm. lyric, lyric, you know, lyric songwriter. So I bought that aspect as well, you know, um, soul, you know, like I like soul, I bring soul. Because I, I heard you're like the hook man. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I am the hook, the hook smith. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I command, you know, just the talent that God gave me to manufacture, you know, hooks. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And um, that's where a lot of, you know, the, should I say the content came from certain certain hooks that I did. You know what I'm saying? He had some himself as well, but when I came with the hooks, you know, it is what it was. So I think I'm, by me being multi-dimensional, multi-talented, I think that's what, you know, and I could just play whatever genre, you know what I'm saying, whatever it is by me being a true musician. So mm -hmm. I bought musicianship to it. When you think back to King George and all those days, the early on days, uh, even when we talked to Silk, we talked about uh, Kevin Miller, the brother that passed away, because early on that was a campaign that basically the the RIP Kevin Miller, is, you know, that was the thing because I thought that they had left uh, after he passed away, but they uh, they say, Silk say they have, was in Richmond already yeah. when he when he passed when he got killed could you uh just give me your spiel on kevin miller and just basically um how did you hear about it when it, you you was relative so of course you heard about it well i can say this much about kevin when percy went to play ball at u of h he was in houston playing ball out there is that Kevin stayed at home. I think he, he, he was playing ball at Southern University of New Orleans, Suno. And we were close. Like I would come from Morgan City and go to the Cali and visit my cousins. And I was real tight with, with especially those two and their sister Jermaine, you know, all their uncles and stuff from Marvin Anthony, their dad, Big Percy. So, uh, but... I was there, I was going to Suno myself, you know, and uh, when I would go, 
to school, sometime I would get off, you know, or if I was at another school, Nickel State, I was going to Nickel State as well. So I would go sometime on the weekends to go with my fraternity brothers, and then I would stop in the Calio. Percy, would, he was already in Houston, going to U of H, but I left Kevin in the Calio. Me and Kevin we used to hang out all the time. We used to kick it and, you know, do cousin things. So Kevin was a real serious person. He he had jokes, you know what I'm saying? He was he would pretty much I would say peas, they 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 they're about a year apart. You know what I'm saying? So he was peas, you know, other side. You see what I'm saying? This dude had a had a savvy about him, he had a charisma about him, and um just I'm just gonna say I miss him, man. Because the more I talk about him, you know what I'm saying, the, mm-hmm. the more emotional it get. I remember when I got when I called. I, I, I got to share this moment. Um, I called the Calio, called his house that he was staying with, that he was staying at, and his uncle answered the phone. His uncle Anthony, and I asked for Kevin. And his his uncle said, "My name is Raymond. You know, it's my real name, Raymond." He said, "Raymond, this Raymond." I said, "Yeah, this Raymond." He said, "You ain't hear about it." He said, "Kevin died." Mm. I said, "What? How? Where? Who? What? When? What?" I said, "Man, Kevin got killed." And you know what I'm saying? So, you know, just to hear that, you know, he was so young, full of capabilities and you know I'll never forget that when I when I called looking for him mm-hmm. and when I got the news from his uncle we, at the house that he was staying at that he had passed away and then a couple of weeks later well a week later we went to the funeral that's when I saw Percy and that's a Romeo was a little boy mm-hmm. yeah you know, Romeo was holding he was holding he was holding Romeo in his hand you know what I'm saying and he you know, P was tough. He's tough. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He was tough, man. And, and P, you know, he was looking at his brother, and he told Romeo, "There'll be." The, I think Romeo, Romeo had to been about two or something like that. So you see your uncle. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like it, it was, it was crazy, man. So wow. yeah, man. So that's my family, man. You know, real talk. No. So, rest in peace, Kevin rest Miller. Rest in peace, man. Kevin Love Miller, man. man. Dude, I man. just used to hear P when he say. Kevin Miller, he he would say that on songs so much, and I loved his music so much that I would always, at every interview, I always ask that question because his his method early on during that time when he was putting the music out was to keep his brother's name keep alive. Keep his name alive. Oh, no, he, um, he was going to make people the world He was going to make them feel Kevin, Kevin Miller, Miller, and I was one of those guys that caught that. Mm-hmm. And I caught it, and since I've been doing this show, when, since I've been dealing with y'all, I always ask that question. Silk just gave me his spiel. Silk told me how he would look out for him and stuff. Yeah, he was man. always remember. You remember Silk talking about it, and that's that's what make us who we are. Because I remember those spots. Because I lost my uncle, um, my daddy's brother, uh, when he was thirteen. He was dead, and I went and found him. You know, wow, so when he man. was dead. You know, I was thirteen, and he might have been twenty three, twenty two. My uncle Hut. And I went in the room and found him. You know what I mean. And mm-hmm. and I always think about being young and dying young, and uh, just just those things that I went through, losing friends and losing friends that I was hustling in the streets with. So I know this is real, and I know already those people that I'm talking about now always want to keep their names alive. You know the the, mm-hmm. the family relatives. I mean, we found those letters in my dad's mm-hmm. house. Wow. Of people who had passed but wrote letters to one another, <laughs> so stuff like that just touched my heart. So the Kevin mm-hmm. Miller thing, it, 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 it'll always be on this show. Like I do, Pimp C the same way. I'll always do that. Do you feel that um, when you lose people like that, like you're talking about, you know, finding someone that you know, not everybody experienced something like that. Um, do you feel like that affects you mentally, even as years go by? Sometimes when you're younger, you don't think subconsciously it might. But as you get older, you learn to realize certain things. Oh, that's why that affected me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So do you think that you were affected by well, seeing I something really, like that? I, don't, I, don't, I was tough, man. I seen a lot of deaths. I seen a lot of deaths. I seen a lot of dying. I lived in the projects in Vegas. You would see niggas die. You, I was young. My daddy got shot in the head 
when I was a kid wow. in the gambling wow. shack, the same place. Oh, where he my, lived. Where, yeah, he lived. Wow. Uh, and he used to keep the bullets in his pocket. And and my uh, my other my my his brother died, got killed in that same gambling shack. Wow. And my other uncle, he burnt that shack down. But it's like I always remember these stories, and then coming up, seeing people get shot, seeing people get killed. That was a part of life. So mm -hmm. I just, you start becoming numb to it. See, you know, being a part of it. When the 90s, when the drugs hit the scene, you start being a part of it if you're in the streets. Mm -hmm. So now you were used to seeing people get killed. You now seeing it and it don't affect you and you you cool with, with death. When you turn 35 on up, you go to a lot of funerals. Oh yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But... Through it all, you start to understand that this is a process in life, right? So I don't think it affects you if you if you're a person that deal with it a lot. Just but like then, going working at the funeral home, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, really. But then but then exactly what comes to mind when you're talking and you're saying how you see it so much that you become numb to it. I think about in the military, how when they're overseas and they have to go through, you know, killing and all of that mm -hmm. and they see it, they become numb to it. But when they come back here, they that's not now their normal life, so they now have to readjust to certain things, and it, it causes problems. To some people. Uh, some people it don't. Well, the guy that be with us, mm -hmm. our security, he's not affected like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it becomes a mind thing. To where it's like in the military, like in the theater of war, you know, like especially like in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. It was a deaf around them all the time. So it's like a condition. It's a mental condition. You see in psychology, it's just such a thing, this terminology that they call classical conditioning. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when you see things so much, like you said, you become desensitized to it. That's exactly Just like right. this generation right now, through these video games, through the... the Didn't know. Everything. The video games... And also the narrative that's being pushed right now. Yeah. It's a deaf culture going on right now. And with, when these kids, you know, play these games, the shooting games, the the, the uh, grand theft autos, you know what I'm saying? Now you got a lot of kids jacking, you know, they're they breaking in cars now. Correct. It's a big nationwide epidemic going on right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know. I want to ask you about, I'm going to go back to PMC and that player from the South Stack G's. I didn't get the. You know, I got to get that on here. <laughs> got to get that. When y'all came up with this, and even the Down South Hustler, thank you for getting them on that track. I know mm -hmm. all this stuff, you you like me, you you locked in the bun in Pimp C, mm -hmm. that UGK movement. But when how did that song end up even happening? Could you explain that to me? Which one, playing from the South mm -hmm. Stage? Mm -hmm. Well, I already did work with them prior to. Okay. So, you know. From um, the CC Waterbound, like I told you, I had an album, uh, a record label. But at this time, when I moved to Kansas, my uh, my cousin Mary Young, you know, he had taken over the thing. You know, what I'm saying because I was, you know, I was out of town. Say, hey man, you take it over, you do it, you do your thing with it. But um, but I told him if you ever need me, you know, what I'm saying just call me. Okay. You know what I'm saying, and uh, that was one of the times where he called me. He had already built a relationship with them. You know what I'm saying? And um, when I met them, you know, we had a vibe. And then that transferred to me introducing them to my cousin, to Percy, to P. And flew him, they flew him out to uh, California. We got a vibe. I started doing my thing on the keyboard. Pim like, yeah, Dick. Yeah, they call me mm -hmm. Dick. So he knew the... Yeah. He does he done music too. Uh beat machines and stuff like that. Did you ever see him do his thing? Absolutely. We what, did it together. What was what was the type of beat machine did you see him work with? A R eight, rolling R eight. He did work with a rolling R eight. Yeah. He was cold with it. Cold with it. What 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 sticks out to you about Pimp C and that ro that that R eight? What what was it? He just knew it. He just did things with it that Nobody else did with it. His um, the way he programmed it, his hi hats. The t -t 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 -t, you know what I'm saying? You know, he had his thing. You know, he was a musician as well, and um, he just put his own his own 
sauce on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the best way I could explain it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I got some more in there that I talk about on that particular song. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's in there. <laughs> That's but hard, he, man. But the thing I say about his, this dude, man, he had a passion. Like, we had a kindred passion for music, for the same type of music from soul, you know what I'm saying? He he would like to go back to the I he was big Isley brothers. Yeah, you know man. What I'm saying? Them organs is another thing. But them he he had some punching kicks that's on there. Cause that's one thing rolling on for is the kick drums, the eight oh eights. That's where the whole terminology of eight oh eight comes from. A lot of people think that the eight oh eight is a drum, but eight oh eight T R eight oh eight, the rhythm eight oh eight is actually a machine. So wow. Not only the kick come from it, the snare, the hi hats, the claves, the cowbell, a lot of stuff come from that machine. But Roland also made that R eight, and he knew what to do with it. When when that when the beat go dun 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 dun, who was that doing that? That was me in him. That was me in him. Cause what he did, he took what I did, and and made it do that. It's it's like chopping it like before chopping and screwing. Yeah, he did it on the actual machine. You know, cause that wasn't the only thing he had. It was also a keyboard that I was playing called the Onsonic. Okay, you know what I'm saying? And um, I forgot what model. I think it was a T3, something like that. And I, what I played, he took it and you know freaked it. Yeah, cause it go mm-hmm. dumb. It kind of it kind of builds up. Mm-hmm. That's me playing that part. Boom. Man, you know so he, you know, he. That's when he, when he heard me play that, he was like, "Yeah." <laughs> so then he even did his thing and do 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 do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, he freaked it, man. And and, and Bon B come that thing said live in diary, mm-hmm. man. That thing, man. Listen, man. That's one of my favorite songs, man. Bumba. What? <laughs> Man, that thing was so nice, man. I know already, man. That was that was different, man. That right there, really, you know, I didn't go by the chart thing and all that, really, because I knew already how they looked at the South. Mm-hmm. Oh, the yeah. sound that you guys created. That's another thing we got to get into before I get you out of here, just how that sound y'all created was in a time when it wasn't re- respect. It wasn't, I ain't, it wasn't respected. I'm going to say it. It wasn't respected on the level that I think it should have been. They didn't, they didn't, they labeled it as not hip hop. Correct. And that's when, you know, I don't know if you remember Pimp C what? said. Don't even play. He said, this ain't no hip hop. It's, it's country, country rap, rap tune. tunes. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was riding with him with that. You, you was know riding with him? Yeah. I mean, you know, I was a hip hop head prior, but when we did, when we put our sauce on it, like Bun said, yeah, the, the, you know, we took over rap and we ain't giving it back. You hear me? Yeah. So we ain't get Bun say that. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know the you know when we when we came and did our thing, which could you got to know everything came from the south. Everything. Everything. Memphis had his blues. You know what I'm saying? Even country come from the south. Everything. You know. So when we when we finally made our entry in it, like even the songs that they were sampling back in the days. Well, old New Orleans records, you know what I'm saying? Old, you know, James Brown. James Brown got his funk from New Orleans. So I'm saying after the funky drummer, you know. So, you know, it it was inevitable, you know, for us to come in and do what we do, you know. Wow. You know, what I look at and, and this is so you know, the thing I look at and, and I'm gonna say this, you know, you guys were just special, man, in everything that you you guys accomplished, man. You one of those guys that I just, you know, I'm happy to even have you on, on Boss Talk one oh one, man. What okay. a boss's talk. And um when I think about just um the stuff that you brought you bring to the table, um, you know, without you, that down south hustlers, um, Bun B and UGK, they don't end up on there. Mm. What about the Dayton family? Dayton family? I never met those guys. You never met those never guys? Met How many people? This project, because even C was on there, Big Court, mm-hmm. you know, like, like, how many people? This was a, it was a double cassette. That was P, bro. <laughs> it was a double cassette, you. man. He said, you want to get on it? Come on, get on it. See, P, P was, you know, he was a dude like, you know, hey, man. With, I think he felt that 
the South and the Midwest because they were, you know, Midwest ride with us too because we, we were next door neighbors. And uh, people who didn't have a, a opportunity to be, for exposure, he just gave them that opportunity. He said, you want to get on this? Same thing he did with West Coast Bad Boys. He just was like that, putting people on, you know. So, Man, let me ask you about uh, C. Murder. That's your cousin. Mm-hmm. And he gets locked up. Free C. Murder. Free C. Murder. Free C. Murder. Um, how tough is that being? Um, I know it's tough because I got relatives locked up. How tough is that being, uh, seeing him go through what he had to face? Well, of course, that's my cousin. It's real tough to see that. You know what I'm saying? Me and C, now we had a whole nother relationship too. That dude right there, man, like, he used to keep, you know, he was like the jester, man. Like, I mean, kept me laughing. You know what I'm saying? Brilliant, brilliant jokes. You know what I'm saying? And, to not have that around me no more. And then how much he loved his family, you know what I'm saying? How much he loved his kids. For him to be taken away from his kids is, you know, that's tough. And it's not only tough on him, it's tough on those kids as well. Mm-hmm. So a, lot, just, a lot of people say he was the hardest uh, lyricist, uh, hardest rapper that came from No Limb. One of them. I'm just <laughs> telling you what people have hit me up with. He, he dope as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. He dope as fuck. Like, I mean, I mean, listen to listen to the song Down for My Nigga. Woo! That's you know a saying? hard one there. You know what I'm saying? He came with that. And the thing is, C actually could rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Out of out of the Miller brothers, I would say he's my favorite. When it comes to rap. Oh yeah, he's my favorite. Why? Because his 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 whole method, his style, his voice. So he had a heck of a voice, you know. He had mm-hmm. that baritone voice, yeah, yeah. so it's very dark, you mm-hmm. know. It's, you know, kind of sinister, you know what I'm saying? But he just he in his wordplay, you know what I'm saying? And you know, uh, when I had conversation with C, you know, because at first he wouldn't take a rap that serious, you know. C was always a go getter, you know, and he, you know, he was in and out California, you know what I'm saying? And I had to sit down, Cuz one time. I said, Cuz, man. <laughs> but you need to do this, bro. You playing with it. He wasn't messing with it at first. No, what I'm saying, he he was doing it because he was on the earlier TRU stuff. He you was. Know what I'm right. saying, he was doing it, but he wouldn't, you know, fully engage like how mm-hmm. he sh- could have been. And I just sat down for cousin to cousin and said, cuz, bro, you could do this, bro. You know what I'm wow. saying? That extra and, push. And then you see, you know, he, he put his mind to whatever he put his mind to. He was, you know. Me and him played chess too, you know. He like, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he a he, thinker. He, he called me slipping. <laughs> <laughs> he called me slipping, and you know. So like I'm saying, he was a thinker, critical thinker, and whatever he put his mind to, he excelled at it. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I miss my cousin, Free Free C Murder. Free C Murder, man. You wanted to say something? Um, where can people buy your book? The book could be found on number one, Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Walmart, booksamillion.com for right now. So you just get it from any one of those. And wow. what motivated you to write this book? Well, my cousin, Rainier, on, on the maternal side, he came to me one day and said, Cuz, you ever thought about doing a book? And I had it because my mom was just straight in the beats and right. writing songs. You know what I'm saying? I was into that. I'm still into it, but he said, man, with your experience, your expertise, and you got a story, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, you were part of one of the biggest, not the biggest rap label, the most influential rap label on the planet. Mm-hmm. You got a story, man. You Moby Dick. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You need to do a, you need to do a book. Mm-hmm. You know? And I heard him. You know what I'm saying? But I wasn't listening. At I was time. about to say, how long did it take you from the moment he said that till you actually did it? I actually did it, uh, he told me that somewhere around like about 2016, 2015, mm-hmm. he made the suggestion to me. Shout out to Rainy Livers. Mm-hmm. That's my birthday, cut him. We, we share the same birthday, the okay. 4th of July. Oh, your celebration, uh, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> but then he, you know, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just still, like I'm saying, I was in my beat zone. I'm trying to put out more projects post No Limit. And, um, then I started thinking about doing a documentary, and uh, and that didn't, you know, come to fruition. You know what I'm saying that we tried the Beast by the Pound documentary, it didn't come to fruition. So I said, you know what? 
let me do more research on this. And I did more research. And come to find out all your greatest movies. Started out in a book. Started out in a book. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I said, you know what? But even before then, I started, I would say like about after he made the suggestion, I started about three years after. Three that. years after, okay. And um, when, like I'm saying, back to me doing a documentary, and I did my research and looked at all the like, comic books and DC Comics and the Stephen Kings, you know what I'm saying? The they were all books. Harry Potter and mm -hmm. all this stuff. They were all books. You know, Years game, before. Games of Thrones, Game of Thrones and all that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So, so when I'm is the documentary coming? Because I know that for the main fact that you did this, you know, you went ahead and did this first because that didn't work out. I know the documentary is still coming. Oh, it's definitely still coming. So I'm, I'm just going to let God do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, hopefully an adaptation comes from, mm -hmm. from cause like I'm saying, it's in an encyclopedia format, so any portion of that could be made into an adaptation or a documentary or whatever, you know. But uh, I just say, well, look, because I had a stroke. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had when? a stroke. Two, well, 2020. That's yeah, recently. 2020, yeah. I had almost left here. God bless you. You know what I'm saying? God you look great. good, man. Man, God. You can't great, even man. tell. What look, was your symptoms? How did well, you know you were having a stroke? At first, I thought it was vertigo, just vertigo. I thought it was the things that came with age, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because I'm in my upper 50s. I'm closer to 60 than what I am to 50. Mm -hmm. All praise to the most high. Thank God. So um, I had that those symptoms of vertigo, then they started... I went and got treated for vertigo. So they didn't even check it to know that it wasn't that? No, because that's what I told them. The oh. doctor's only going what you tell them. Oh, I can't you know stand what I'm saying? that. Mm -hmm. So I went on, so, you know, I, I got one test, you know, a couple of tests, blood and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they gave me a, a CAT scan and mm. didn't do an MRI. So I'm saying, but after I got that, the, the CAT scan, the first time I went to the doctor, because I, I had several episodes of a vertigo because when I had the first episode I'm like man something's going on what's, what's, what's happening so I did my research like I said I'm a researcher mm -hmm. yeah like I researched the symptoms and it said vertigo. vertigo so you actually had vertigo as well vertigo is a byproduct it's a symptom of stroke of I just didn't stroke. know I was, oh. what I thought was vertigo was many strokes the mm. little strokes that were leading up to the big one. So how many strokes did you have? Many? Uh, uh, I think about three or four. Really? And, it, and it was spread out in two weeks interval. That's what I was. Interval. Mm -hmm. Then it went into weeks and then days. You were stressed? Yeah, hey, I think it was. I think, it, and, and also um, it's the accumulation of, you know, series of events that happened in life. Stuff that I had on my mind and not for let a it long go. Time. Yeah, it, it, it was you know. Then on top of that, I was binging on shrimp, not knowing that shrimp, you know. What you know, does it do? It's the highest source of cholesterol, bad cholesterol. Really? Remember, you remember? Um, I'm gonna tell you. You say PMC, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. PMC, like I'm saying, we like brothers. You know what I'm saying? And Bun B. So I used to eat a whole like bags, pounds of shrimp. When we Pepper would do, shrimp? Uh boil shrimp. Boiled shrimp, the okay. Boiled shrimp, you know what I'm saying? With yeah. potatoes and corn yeah. and mm -hmm. all that type. We talking about cholesterol and all kind of bad stuff in that. I'm thinking I'm eating good. You know what I'm saying? So when he said I eat so many shrimp, I got iodine poison. Poison. He get that from me. Cause I used to tell him, he said, Well damn, Dickie. You know, cause that's a terminology down, you know. South, like from Port Arthur, like the I 10 corridor, and Highway 9, and yeah. Old Spanish Trail. In that sea, in that area, in that body of water, is a lot of shrimp. Yeah. He said, Cause my mom used to say, you know what I'm saying? Hey, boy, you keep eating that shrimp, so many shrimp, you're going to catch iodine poisoning. So when I was eating, he said, Man, dig, why you eat so many shrimp? I said, Man, I'm trying to catch iodine poisoning. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Man. You know where you get that from, you heard That's me? crazy, mm -hmm. man. I'd have never guessed that, man. Thank you so much, man. Uh, the history is, hey, man, it, it's, it's something else, man. When you, when, when you, Boz told me to ask y'all this. When I talk to y'all, Boz say, ask him, man, what did Boz mean to No Limit, man? When it, when it comes to Boz. Boz, I'm first, I'm first to say this. Boz was a true and it is a true kind of suit. Shout out to Boz, man. Shout out to Boz, man. Love that dude. 
true connoisseur of music. True connoisseur. True connoisseur of music. And a, a businessman of, you know what I'm saying? So he was P's right brain. Cause they they were in school together, you know, from you know elementary and stuff like that. Yeah. So Bob was, you know, Bob was the like, hey, you know, P would consult with him. Bob would tell him how he felt about it, and then P would go with it. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they would have disagreements. You know, they you know like any Anybody friends else? or brothers. You know what I'm saying? But Bob was, you know, like you know how how a uh, baby and and his brother, yeah, you know, yeah, and Slim, yeah. As that's what you know. He would be the he would be the slim, and P would be the baby. That, yeah, just always to working, make it, just to just make to it make, make sense. It makes sense, you know. what I'm saying, not saying that anybody was emulating anyone, mm -hmm. but just to make it, you know, make it make sense, make, make it fit. It. Let me ask you this, man. C, uh, Big Court, how did he? When you seen him uh, rapping and dealing with his thing, being an outside guy from Kansas, I don't know why you hanging in Wichita, mm -hmm. but <laughs> anyway, just. <laughs> How, uh, what did you think of his style of rap and who he was as a person as it became the No Limit team? He was dope, man. They they came in this group called CCG. Correct. When I first met him, you know what I'm saying, he was just cool, you know what I'm saying, just just like he is now, you know what I'm saying? Really? Great, great person, man. Great heart, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't always that big. That big. <laughs> he, he swore. When, I, when I saw him next time, I said, boy, you got swole. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I saw like him in the videos and stuff later and I kind of find out because he used to have the mask on at first. Yeah. We kind of find out, you know, I find out like through the grapevine, you know that's court, right? You know that's court. And um, when I saw him at the No Limit, uh, we did a show for the, uh, like a reunion show for the Essence Fest in 2017. And they were like, when we saw each other, you know, but you know, like from day one, he always been, you know, real, real good dude. And he, I understand guys from Kansas City for me, you know, living in Wichita. You know, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I, I I used to live in Ogden. Oh, okay. stop playing, man. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I was over there on Fort Riley. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So you in the military? No, I wasn't in the military, but my family was, so I had okay. to be there. Well, we yeah. could, we used to always go right because that's not too far from Manhattan State. too. Yeah, we used to always go there. You know, what I'm saying? yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's hard, man. Let me ask you. Um, uh, I got to ask you about Mac. I'm not going to let you go to I ask you about these two people, Mac and Mill. So I got to ask you about Mac. Uh, when Mac was early on, we interviewed Mac when he came home. This dude, man, went through so much, but he still was so humble. And he still was so forgiving. And he still was such a pure spirit dealing with this guy mm -hmm. that you it, you didn't sense anger or or. or hate toward any situation that had became him. Just who was he to you when he left? Before he left? When he comes home? Explain Mac to me. Man, the first thing I'm going to say, intelligent, prolific. Intelligent, prolific, humble, good, just all around good person. And like they say, the apple don't fall too far from the tree because his mama, Miss Sheila, his big Mac, his daddy, just good people, man. Real talk, he just come from good pedigree. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Mac is just genuinely, when you see him, that's what it is. So we all knew when he caught that charge that that wasn't him. No, man, y'all got the wrong dude, bro. I mean, you know, come on, bro, not Mac. You know what I'm saying? He, when he came up with the, the word camouflage assassin, I mean, he was a real MC. I would assassinate motherfuckers on this mic. Yeah, he loved. Ain't, ain't too many people can get with me on this mic. You know what I'm saying? So he, his flow, his choice of words, it just, I mean, to have him on the tank was just a blessing. Like, yeah, but we got us, you know what I'm saying? We got us an MC. Not, not taking anything away from the other ones, you know what I'm saying? But we got a dude who's resonant. He's oozing hip-hop. See, we had a hip-hop artist. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, yeah. A real hip-hop artist. The other one was going, well, Mia, let's go with Mia. Let me take a quick sip. Go ahead. I want to ask you about Mac coming home and, and when you heard he was coming home, kind of how, and we're going to meet, but how he, how, where were you at? What did you think? And did you, had you have you seen him perform since he's been out? I haven't seen him. I haven't seen Mac. You hadn't even seen out. him? I haven't seen him. Wow. We talk. You we talk. talk. Okay. We but talk. you hadn't seen him? I haven't seen him. You know, I'm still You've looking been, forward to doing cause it. Because you was up in, you've been in, where you at, that's kind of far. Mm -hmm. So when are you going back to New Orleans? Well, I would say later on this week. There you go. You going to link week. up with him? 
Hopefully. Hopefully, because he be moving around. You know, he doing video. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Last time we was there, he was doing a video with Fiend, and mm. he moving around. He doing his thing right now. Yeah, man. It went, when, when he got out there, it was like, man, about time, man. Yeah, about yeah. About time, you know, you know, these people saw that this year I had the wrong guy the whole wow. time. But he kept his his um, composure. He, he stayed, you know, strong, stayed positive, stayed mad. Dang so, yeah. but to, for him to get out just like a big, man, this is a big celebration. Man, ain't it a big celebration, big celebration man? man. I was so happy to talk with him. He talked about Scarface. You know, he went on uh, the uh, Ghetto Boys podcast. He, he been on Beehive. He been on he been on mine. You know this guy, man. Just love Mac, man. Just happen to embrace him and show him that we all happy to see him home and we believe in him. Oh yeah, shout out to Beehive too, as my dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. I never got yeah. to meet him. He followed me on IG. I followed him back, but well, I, I need to interview meet. each other. You know, that'll be hard. That'll be hard, interview, right? Yeah. Interview him, and he need to interview y'all. That'll you be know hard, man. Do that. You heard that, it on Beehive. <laughs> Beehive, man. I said it. <laughs> Let yeah. me ask you this. Uh, uh, Mia X, man. Mia X, uh, we shout out to Sharani uh, at Peaches where we interviewed uh, Mac and interviewed KL and interviewed Sharani. Okay. Um, what's up with Mia X, man? I got to get her. And she said, she coming on Boss Talk. She already kind of committed to it down the line whenever she get ready to pop out. You know she got a product, man. You know she got a cookbook and a all cookbook, that. You know, she, she got to come on Boss that. Talk, yeah, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, man, Mia, man, that's my sister, man. That's all. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, you know, in the early days, we had a clique between me, her, Servon, and KLC. We called it Three Niggas in a Broad. We were all right. I heard about that. Yeah, yeah that's that's us. Yeah. That's Three Niggas in a Broad. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? So that's my sister, man. Like, I mean, for her to live amongst men like that and still be a lady, you know what I'm saying? Still be a goddess, you know what I'm saying? Amongst, you know what I'm saying? I mean, class act. Class, class act. I love Mia. I love her kids. You know what I'm saying? Mia and her lyricism ain't too many to mess with. Nothing her. like it. I know, ain't too many to mess with her. But she was just, she was the nurturing spirit, man. Just very nurturing. You know what I'm saying? Mama Mia. You know what I'm Servo saying? Servo said she was like, you knew to get it together when yeah. you come around Mia. Mama Mia. You weren't going to be talking to all them girls and doing all that stuff. She wasn't playing no games. None. Mm -mm. Man, and, and to ha be a female and to hold on during that time when you didn't have many female, you know, mm -hmm. hip hop artists, especially from the South, mm -hmm. that was hard, man. Yeah, man. That was hard, man. I think that, I, I think that's it. Which, which, Is there an, um, any other albums we can expect from you down the line? Yeah, I'll be putting one out here real soon. When? Um, I would say <laughs> between the next month or two. Okay. Yeah. That's so all. right right now my focus is the movie. Of course, yeah. of course. You know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm gonna be on a hardcore campaign for that and um I'm gonna follow that up with this next project which I feel is like right now the uh the title of it right now is a top secret right now. That's what I was <laughs> I was trying to see if you were gonna let that top secret go. <laughs> but but the thing is now that's that work. Wow, is that work? I'm telling is, you. Is there any youngsters we can expect on the project? Because you know, with a newer generation, is there anybody you collabed with or worked with for this I'm, new project? I'm glad you asked. Great question. I'm glad you asked that question because I was about to say it. No features. Mm. <laughs> this is the only project I ever did. With no features. Wow. No features. No Why? No, because I figured I just wanted Wouldn't to do just, one for everybody. I just I'm wanted to it. just you know express myself. You know what I'm saying? I never did nothing like that. I was always a feature. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was always, a, you know, hook smith or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I never did want just me holding my Ooh, I can't, I, wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait just I'm going to love it, man. So I'm doing, my, I'm doing it all, you know, except for just the production. I got production from other people. You know what I'm saying? KL on their production? Not yet. Okay. But yeah, we'll yeah. be. We still, we still My boy on right there. Yeah, yeah. What do you think when you think about KL, man? KL is my boy. Beast. <laughs> Beast. Beast. That's my dude. We both cancers too. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. So man, I'ma tell you what, the first time I heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's it's talk like, about it. Say something wrong with this dude, right? <laughs> 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 something wrong with that why? Where's his where is he from Neptune? Where is he from? It was different, wasn't it? Yeah, he's from another galaxy. Yeah, so you know he KL man's a he's a hip hop 
uh, extraordinaire. You know, he, a lot of people don't know he's a b boy too. You know, he's yeah, great yeah, dance and all yeah. that stuff. We already we talk about that every yeah, time. Yeah. We challenge each other in here because I, oh, you, I you, what? You get down? What? I know I could spin I, and I might like it. To. I could still spin. I think. So I, and I, I don't know if I could. I definitely couldn't. Uh, couldn't do that. Uh, now it's one move I ain't gonna be able to do. No, no, no. It's certain <laughs> ones. I, I can remember, man. You've been to hurt yourself now mm-hmm. at this age. He embodies all the elements of hip hop. Mm-hmm. B boy, you know, from from tagging. Yeah, you know, to break dancing, to DJing, MCing. He is he that emb- guy. He, he embodies it. And the thing about it, he takes his craft real serious. He's he very uh, meticulous. You know what I'm saying? And um, his, you know. It's nothing like it, man. I mean, we still hear that down from my niggas. Man. Yeah, you know this thing went that, hard, man. You know what I'm saying? That, uh, move, bitch, get out the way. What? You know what I'm saying? Man, I'm telling you, this KL, man. Man, that boy go crazy, this man. KL. He, he mm-hmm. told me his PMC story, man, that mm-hmm. one that they did together too, man. Break them off some. They break them up? No, no, they're not. That's, not, that's you? No, they're not. That's me and PMC. That wasn't break them off. Was it break? I think that's the one me and him talking no, about. You talking about? You might be talking about kick though. Kick though. That's that, what it yeah, was. That, Bro, yeah. Break him off. Something was you and Pimp yeah, C. Me and Pimp C. Yeah. Now you got to give me that story. I did because we did kick. He did the kick though. Was one me and him talked about yeah, the yeah. game. But yeah, that was it. Yep. Break him off. Something. Let's go for you. Get off here because you fit to get off here. Break well, him off. Something. Break him off. Something is like a continuation of um, played from the south. Really? You know, people like, hey man, we got to have another one of them from, from you and Pimp. You know, and you know, dun, 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 oh, dun, yeah. dun, dun, dun. he already see see the bulk of that beat was him. That was Pimp C. Pimp, you know, from the the drums, the the organ, the bass, boom, 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 boom. That was Pimp. You know what I'm saying? But I came with it. And they were going in. That was me. That was and, you. Yeah, and in the on the, uh, the chords from the the. Uh, the roads, you know what I'm saying? So that was me. How long did it take y'all to do the, the, the that whole thing? Well, it, it didn't take long, because, you know, when I came in, when the, you know, pull, Ooh, we, we actually did that one in Port Arthur. Y'all did that one in we Port Arthur? We did that one in Port Arthur at Pimp and Bun House. You know what I'm that saying? That was the one that he talked about him getting in the bathtub to make isolate the sound? No, 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 that, that, no, that, that, that wasn't one there because they tell you they put they put some in the. In, you remember that? That was Boz who said. Boz was saying yeah, that yeah. might have been an early one when they first done it, huh? Yeah, I was, I was there. I helped make the beat. You, you helped make that beat I mean, at that at beat. Pimp House. At or? Pimp House. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying I, I did that. You know what I'm saying I, I heard Boz saying I was there. I'm one of the ones who did the beat. You know what I'm saying wow. so. But uh, you working yeah. your butt off. You always in the midst, man. Yeah. You know, Always, you know, you know, God is great, man. Just God gave me some great opportunities, man, to be around some great people to make wow. history with. You know, what I'm saying, like, I mean, it was just a ride like no other, man. So, and I'm, I'm grateful. You for should all be of very it. proud. Thank you so much, yeah, man. I appreciate it. I'm now, man, you bless me, man. Like I said, all these years, when I get to see y'all, the ones I really, really listen to y'all music, mm-hmm. and I was going down the street or something, and they were telling me what I was doing because I probably wasn't doing anything. <laughs> you only want, boy, God made it. God is good. That's mm-hmm. all I can tell you. Yes, I made it home. You know what I'm saying? But it was a lot of days and nights that that music got me through, bro. Yes, a lot I mean, of days and nights that music got me through. Thank, thank God we're able to be instrumental in that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And not not only just, No Limit was a machine. It was more than just the talent, but like I'm saying, you had the bosses and the P's to who, who was able to, and rest in peace to Vesta Scott. Okay. That was able to, you know, make sure that it was packaged properly. Yeah, and yeah. And brought to the rest yeah. of where they did the business on it. You know what I'm saying? So it wouldn't have been done without those people. So, Man, thank you so much for coming on the show. Top three Artists, producers of all time, dead or alive. That's it. Top three. Dead or alive? Dead or alive. Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones, number one. Or no water. Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy. Uh, McFan and Whitehead. McFan and Whitehead. Yes, sir. Well, you a bad boy, yes, man. See, see, Gail took a long time trying mm-hmm. to figure that out. He, I had to listen to call. Oh, yeah, well, mm-hmm. he's got to give it to me, man. Okay. Thank you so much, man. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Well, on social media, all my social media is Moby Dick Official. M O B, no Y. D I C K. Man. Official. Man. At G. Well, uh, at that on all of them. IG, 
And on Facebook, it's just Moby Dick, M O space B dot D I C K. Man, thank you so much. Did you get everything out? Yes, sir. Man, I'm going to tell you something, man. Thank you so much. We love you, brother. Love you all, man. And let me man. tell you God something, man. Anytime you're in Texas, man, you, as long as I'm here and these bills getting paid, mm -hmm. listen, man, you're always welcome to come here. If you're trying to show somebody something or put somebody, you know, put, a, put something out into their atmosphere, God blessing us to have a platform here. You always welcome to come here, man. Absolutely, man. Appreciate y'all for having us, man. man we oh, love shout out to Cat bro. Daddy too. That's my boy. Cat Daddy here That's in town. He called me one day. He might call me again That's now. My dude. He yeah. called me on the phone one day, probably about three months ago. Absolutely. He probably be coming on the show. I ain't seen him. He probably called me back. That's he said, a, That's gonna "This be a Cat good Daddy." He's I said, "What?" Animated. <laughs> yeah, he is. And ask him who. Ask him who. Um, who gave him that? Um, Cat Daddy, make it stop. <laughs> you turn them on to that man <laughs> yeah. check it man yeah. hey man make sure you gotta like and subscribe man it's been another great segment man a right. boss talk 101 where the bosses talk and we, we out man yeah.